Johnny here with Simpson Math. In this video, we will be covering the integration strategy of U substitution. And I think I'll just jump straight into an example. Let's consider the integral of e being raised to x to the fourth power multiplied or times 4x cubed dx. With U substitution, this strategy, this technique, you're trying to find maybe a portion of this product that when you differentiate that differential is another piece of the integral. So what I mean by that is like if I were to differentiate an e function, e to the whatever, it would spit out another e. I don't see another e. But if I were to differentiate this x to the fourth power the derivative of x to the fourth is sitting right here. It's 4x cubed with respect to x. So I'm going to do some substitution. I'm going to let some dummy variable, I'm going to call it u, I'm going to let u equal x to the fourth power. And then I'm going to take the derivative with respect to u. du, the differential, will be equal to an old power rule for differentiation. Bring down the power, rewrite the base, subtract 1 from the power, and this is with respect to x. We call this the like a differential or differential form. So I'm letting u be equal to x to the fourth power. And the derivative of that is inside that integral, 4x cubed dx. This is u substitution. We try to find a piece of the integral that its derivative is also in the integral. So let's just try now to substitute. Switching over from x's into u's. So I still have the integral, but now I have e being raised to the u power. And that's being multiplied by all this blue stuff, or all this du. If I am going to integrate, I need a differential that matches my variable. So I have e to the u with respect to u. Now I feel comfortable integrating. I know this integration rule from the Calculus 1 setting. If at any point during this video I come across an integration rule that you're unfamiliar with, or a uh, differential rule, your derivative rule you're unfamiliar with, uh, just maybe go back and review some Cal 1 videos. But I feel comfortable integrating. The integral of e to the u is simply e to the u plus any constant that may pop up. Bam! Now I'm, this is u though, I want to go back into x land. So I'm just going to substitute one more time. I'm going to turn that u back into x. So e to the x to the fourth power plus c. Just a reminder, when you're finding integrals, one way to think about what we're doing here is I'm trying to find the set of every derivative out there that when I find um, the derivative, it gives me this. No, that's not quite right. Uh, yeah, that's right. So, meaning, if I now take the derivative of this, I can always check my work with integration, except if I find the derivative of this, it should go back to what I started with. In fact, let's just check our work here. I want to find the derivative of my answer here, e to the x to the fourth power plus any constant I can think of. Well, derivatives, they're a linear operator, so I can find the derivative of the first term and the derivative of the second term separately and then add them together. And the derivative of any constant is going to go to zero, so that's convenient. So I really just need to find the derivative of e to the x to the fourth. Well, that's just the derivative rule. The e to the whatever will be e to the whatever, but there is a chain rule involved here. So this is 
just spits it back out, e to the x to the fourth, times, kicks out the chain rule. I still need to find the derivative of x to the fourth. That's an old power rule. That's 4x cubed. Bam. I guess I'll go ahead and put dx. So one way to think about u substitution is it's this chain rule in reverse. So from the derivative rules, that chain rule that we learned early on, it's kind of that process in reverse. All right. Let's move on to a, another example. I've got here the integral of 3x squared times this binomial x cubed plus 2 being raised to the fourth power with respect to x. All right. So at any moment in this video, if you want to pause and try this on your own, uh, feel free. And then, of course, I'll have the answer in just a few minutes. All right, but this is falling under the umbrella of u substitution. So I'm kind of looking for something I can differentiate that its derivative will be in the problem. So I do see a 4 and a 3, um, but I also see this 3 and the 2. I think maybe if I let u be what's inside of these parentheses, x cubed plus 2, then the derivative is that 3x squared. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, and the two will go away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to let u be what is inside these parentheses, the base of this exponential. x cubed plus 2. Then the derivative of u will be 3x squared with respect to x, dx. So I'm ready. I've got my 3x dx, my 3x squared dx, sorry. And then my u is inside these parentheses. I'm ready to do my substitution. I'm going to have u to the fourth power times du. So I have a little strategy here. Uh, one common thing to look for in u substitution is to let u be something that's being raised to a power. So I'm just going to write that strategy down. So I'm just going to let u be the base of an exponential. Meaning if you ever see something like blah to the third power, you can try and let u be blah. It may not always work, but it's a good strategy. And that's what we did in this example. We had this base being raised to the fourth power. We let u be that base, and then it turned out nicely. This is an old power rule in reverse. So the integral of u to the fourth will uh, raise it up. This is going to be u now to the fifth power. And then remember, we multiply by the reciprocal of that new power. So I have a one-fifth out front. And of course, this is plus c. When you uh, take the integral of an indefinite integral, meaning there's no limits of integration, an indefinite integral, you always have to spit out that plus c. All right, I'm ready to go back into x land. This will be equal to a... I guess I could keep the one-fifth coefficient or maybe just write everything over a five. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to have x cubed plus two to the fifth all over that five plus a constant. And a good practice would be to then take the derivative of this. And I'm going to move on now to another example. All right. Again, I'm just going through these examples. Uh, all right. So here I've written down that the du may not be so pretty. In the previous two examples, those du's were very nice. 
here, if I follow that same strategy where I let u be the base of this exponential, so I'm going to let u equal x cubed plus 9, then the derivative of u is 3x squared with respect to x. Oh, I'm almost there. I have a dx, I have an x squared, but notice my du has a 3. I can't substitute in du without that 3. Or, I need that 3 to go away. So I think what I'll do is I'll take this equation and I'll multiply both sides by a third or divide both sides by a 3. I'm going to call this 1 third du equaling x squared dx. Now I think I'm ready. My u is sitting right there, and then my du, which is x squared dx, is also in that integral. I'm now ready to do some substitution. But when I do this substitution, I have to now replace it with a one-third du. So that's the new thing with this problem. Not too bad. When I substitute in in u's, I'll have a one-third, let's see, u to the fifth du. So there is my one-third du, and there is my u. Now we know integration is also a linear operator, so these constants, we can just pull them out of the integral. That's what I like to do with these coefficients. So I'm going to call this one-third times the integral of u to the fifth du. And from now on, I'll probably just do that in that step. And again, this is the power rule. I got this. This is equal to one-third times, now this is the power rule for integration. This is u to the sixth times the reciprocal out front, one-sixth. I'm going to add c. And then I'm ready to substitute u back into, or my, yeah, change it back into x's. So this looks like an 18th. There's my u. It's now being raised to a sixth power all over this denominator of 18. And I have any constant. I can deal with it with a plus c. All right. So far, so good. Yeah, here's an example where, uh, just to show you that there's not just one way to solve all these like u substitution problems or integral problems. Typically, calculus to a big chunk is solving a bunch of integrals, and you're just learning all the different strategies. So there may be several ways to solve one integral. It's not an exact science here. You just kind of go with it. Um, so I'm going to do this problem twice, and both times using u substitution. And I'm going to start off with that same strategy we've been using. I see a power in the denominator. I have 1 minus x squared. That is being raised to a 1 half power. If you want to go through and rewrite those radicals as powers as your first step, that's probably a good practice. But I know that this base is being raised to a 1 half power. So I'm going to go ahead and let u be that blah, that 1 minus x squared. Now then the derivative of u, or du, well the 1 goes away, and the derivative of a negative x squared becomes negative 2x dx, that differential form. Oh, and I'm almost there. I have the 2x dx. There's that negative. I'm, in order to get rid of it, I'm going to move it to the other side of the equation. So a negative du is exactly what I need, a positive 2x dx. I'm now ready to substitute. 2x dx, which is what I have in the numerator position here, is equivalent to a negative du. I'm going to pull that negative out of the integration. 
I have my du. Down below, I have u being raised to a one-half power. Or the square root of u. All right. I think I can integrate this here. I think I will spend a step to rewrite this as a power. I always do this. This is just how I keep it straight in my mind. If I have 1 over u to the 1 half power, that's the same thing as u to a negative 1 half power. So now this problem is exactly like the ones before. It's just the power rule for integration. I have a negative out front. I'm going to raise the power by 1. Negative 1 half plus 1 is a positive 1 half. Multiply by the reciprocal of that new power, 2 over 1, or simply 2. Add my um, plus c out there. And then I'm just ready to um, substitute. That's a square root of u. So I'm going to go back into the square root notation. It's just the power of 1 half. So I get negative 2 times the square root of 1 minus x squared plus some constant. So let's work this problem uh, one more time, maybe using a different u. I think what I'll do is I'll let u be this, just the entire base. Let's let u equal the square root of 1 minus x squared. And then I'm going to play around with this equality over here. I don't want that square root. It scares me for some reason. So I'm going to square both sides. All right. Um, well, I need du. So I can take now the derivative of both sides. Let's see. That'll look something like this. 2u du equaling, one goes away, negative 2x dx. So I've got a 2x dx, but I want that minus sign to go away. So I'm going to kick it over. A negative 2u du equals positive 2x dx. I'm now ready to make that substitution and then that base was just u so i'm ready for that all of this including that uh, radical is u so i'm going to convert this over into x land i'm going to substitute all right that'll look like one over u and then i have all this stuff i could put it in the numerator i'm going to kind of put it off to the side this is being multiplied by negative 2u uh, du. I don't uh, yeah, yeah. No, no, My notation kind of is messy here. Let's see if I can clean that up. Oh, yeah, I'm going to simplify. And notice what happens to these u variables. One's in the numerator position, one's in the denominator. So I'm just left with the integral of a negative 2 du. And in fact, that negative 2 can come out of the integration process completely. That's cool. All right. Well, the integration should be simple. If I'm integrating 1 du, then that's going to spit out the variable u. Leave the negative 2 out alone. I took care of the integration, so that's when I write my plus c. And then I know what u is, so I'm going to just substitute. Negative 2 times the square root of 1 minus x squared plus c. And I believe that should match our previous example. So again, 
I'm just showing you this uh, second approach where we squared both sides. Uh, just some manipulation, um, just trial and error really. If it doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out. But there's not just one way to work these problems. That's like the point of that problem. All right. I claim you're ready for this problem. I think you should pause the video and do this one. You got it. Just remember you're looking for a piece of the um, integral, the integrand, that when you find its derivative, it's also in the integrand. Pause. Go. All right. If I let cosine be u, then the derivative is a negative sine, which I can handle the negative. But that square messes me up. Oh yeah, this is that same strategy. Let u be the piece, the base of an exponential. So this is sine being squared. I'm going to let u be sine, making du cosine d theta, cosine theta d theta. Perfect. Substituting, I now have u squared du exactly what I need it to be. Well, that's just a cube with a one-third out front. And u was sine. So I've sine cubed over 3 plus c. Nice and simple. Once you understand, you're looking for, you know, derivatives. Um, Hopefully it just kind of falls in place like that one did. All right. So here I have the integral of 1 over 1 plus 4x squared dx. Now this should almost kind of look familiar. I know those old inverse antiderivatives. So just a reminder. When I see this, I see arctan. I don't know if you do. Remember, if we had the integral of 1 over 1 plus just an x squared, that turns out to be a nice arctangent or inverse tangent. So when I first saw this 1 over 1 plus and then the x squared, my mind uh, rushes back to that arctangent derivative. The derivative of arctangent is 1 over 1 plus x squared, meaning the antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus x squared is arctangent. So if I could just maybe manipulate this in some way, maybe I can use that old rule. Uh, well, you substitution, there may be some trial and error involved here. Let's just pick a u and see if it works. Strategy so far has let the base be u. So I see x being squared. Let's let u be x. Then the derivative is dx. So I have the dx, but that doesn't handle the 4. I can't replace this with 1 plus 4u, or if I do, I'm just in the same situation. So I'm going to kind of scratch through that. Maybe I let the base all of the base be u. I'm sorry, u, not du. Just trial and error. If I let u be the denominator, 1 plus 4x squared, then the derivative should be 8x dx. Now that I may be able to handle, like the, I could make the 8 look like a 4, but this x is the problem now. I'm not sure how I'm going to pop out an x on the right hand side. So I'm not liking that u. Now what I really need is for this to be something to the second power. So is there any way I can turn 4x squared into something being raised to the second power? Well, how about 2x? 2x times 2x gives me 4x squared. Okay, I'm going to try this thing. I'm going to let u be 2x, that base. Then 
du is simply 2dx and uh, the 2 needs to go away. I'm going to 1 half the du to get dx and then I think I'm ready for u substitution. I can say dx is just 1 half du pull out the 1 half there's my du and then in the denominator I now have 1 plus u squared very nice so the integral of 1 over 1 plus u squared is arctangent of u I don't know why I changed from tan engine, tangent inverse notation and arc tan notation the same thing, but I don't know why I switched. And I know what u is. u is 2x. So for this example, um, maybe if that didn't pop back, you know, go back and review all those derivative rules you learned in Calculus 1 and some integration um, rules you learned at the end of the Calculus 1. But there we go. 1 half tangent inverse or arctan of 2x plus some constant. All right. Next example, change it up just a little bit. Uh, we call this a definite integral. Notice now I now have limits of integration. I'm looking at this function from 0 to 2, and I'm trying to find the integral. Now, as soon as you have those limits, you can start to think about these problems a little bit differently. Previously, I was thinking of, I need to find all those antiderivatives. There's an infinite number, so the plus c. Now, this is kind of calling back the fundamental theorem of calculus, which I've written above me, which is, you know, here's some function, like that f prime, some derivative. If I can find its antiderivative, f, then I just simply evaluate it at the higher limit and the lower limit and find that difference. And one way to think about this is, it's calculating the area between this curve and like an x-axis. In fact, let me switch over to Desmos just to kind of maybe remind you of what's going on graphically with this problem. So this is just desmos.com. I'm going to enter in our function. In the numerator we have 2x. That's being divided by x squared plus 1 and this is all being raised to a second power. And yeah, that function kind of looks kind of funky. Now, I'm only concerned with uh, like the limits of integration there from 0 to 2. So I can add a domain restriction to this. I'm going to say between or x is between 0 and 2. And I'm going to zoom in on what this function is going to look like. All right, so we have this uh, nice little curve from 0 to 2. And this integration process, it's going to take the, or it's going to calculate the area under this red curve and the x-axis. So it's going to sum up all that area, and that's going to be that final result. So just a nice reminder of what's going on. Let me switch back to my example. So let's, let's do it. Um, let's see. Same strategy. I'm going to let u be the thing that's being raised down here to the second power. I'm going to let u be my base. x squared plus 1. 
the differential du is 2x dx. This is looking real nice. I'm ready for the substitution, but maybe one second here. Right now we're in x land, and these limits of integration. are in x land. When I typed it into Desmos, I said I want to see this graph from 0 to 2 on the x-axis. If I'm switching over into u land, then I'm going to have to make some conversions if I want this equation to be true. So when x is 0, if I can do this calculation, u will simply be that 0 squared plus 1. So I'm just plugging it into that u that I defined earlier. If u is x squared plus 1, then when x is 0, u will be 1. So that lower limit will change from 0, an x variable of 0, to a u variable of 1. When x is 2, I'll have u, sorry, 2 squared plus 1 or a 5. As I change over into U land, I'm going to have a lower limit of 1 and an upper limit of 5. And it looks like I'm going to have a DU over U squared. You could write the DU in the numerator position. I just like to have it off, written off to the side. All right. Oh no, this is just a power rule. So I like to spend a step rewriting that as a power. This is u to a negative second power. Then I can apply the power rule. This goes up 1 to a negative 1, and you multiply by the reciprocal, which is also negative 1. And then watch my notation here. Um, so I'm going up. 1 to negative 1. I'm multiplying outside by a negative 1. It's reciprocal. And then the way we represent this, like the fundamental theorem of calculus, is I'm going to draw a big line that just says I need to still evaluate this thing from 1 to 5. Or at 5 and at 1 and then find the difference. This bar just simply means I'm going to plug in a 5. From that, I'm going to subtract the same thing, plugging in a 1, the lower limit. And if you want to write parentheses around everything, just to help you keep in mind what's going on, this is that that function evaluated at 5. From that, I'm going to subtract that same function. I'm evaluating it at 1. Now, negative 1, that simply reciprocates my base. So this is a negative 1 fifth. From that, I'm subtracting a negative, well, that's just 1. Subtracting a negative, I'm adding here. Let's see, that does not ring a bell to me. Because this should give me a 4 fifth. Okay, yeah. Let's double check my arithmetic. Those signs are always deadly. Bam, bam, bam. Sounds good to me. And that makes sense with my um, curve. Let me switch back over. Four fifths is a positive number. The area is above the x axis. So when we calculate it, it should be represented with like a positive value. I think I. Forgotten all my calculus. <laughs> all right, uh, four fifths. And we can handle this arithmetic differently. Like you could factor out a negative one, apply the fundamental theorem of calculus, whatever that is, you make it negative, you'll still get that same result of four fifths. There's an example of a definite integral. Just keep in mind you are switching variables, so then these limits of integration, that is a variable, so we need to, or that represents the x variable, so we need to switch those as well. 
Technically, you could um, keep the 0 and 2. So at this moment, I'm in U and I substitute in my U's. We could go back like we did on, on all the previous examples. We switch from U land back into X land and then apply your 0 and 2. Uh, but that just uh, gets a little, I don't know, too much going on, I think. All right. Lots of examples. So here's another definite integral example. Pause the video. I think you can do this one. You got this. Try it on your own. So for this one, uh, I let u be x squared, du is 2x, got to kick over the 1 half, substitutes nicely, change my limits of integration, the square root of pi all being squared is just pi. Then this time I took out the negative and the 1 half, I factored them out completely. So then I did my fundamental theorem of calculus. Where I plug in the upper limit and the lower limit, find the difference, and then I multiplied by that negative one half that I factored out. And in the end, I got a one. So this is, you can think of this as an area. If I were to take a look at this graph, it calculates the area from zero to the square root of pi of this interesting looking function. All right. I think I got one more example. This one does not look familiar to me. If that were, no, yeah, that doesn't look familiar. Let's see. I don't have any powers, so my strategy of letting the u be the base of some exponential doesn't seem to ring a bell. Let's just see. What I can do, if I let u equal the base, x plus 1, the differential of u is that dx, but where does that x come from? Well, I do know x in terms of u, uh, so this is, I have not done this in a previous example, but I could take this uh, equation here. And I can say um, x in terms of u, well u minus 1 is equal to x. So that may work. So this will be equal to the integral. I do need to change my limits. But my denominator is replaced with u. My numerator is u minus 1 du. Now this I feel comfortable integrating if I'm kind of comfortable with all this one does. So I tried to let the u equal x plus 1, so I do have a dx, but I needed that x still. So I can solve for x. x is equal to u minus 1. I can write x in terms of u, so I did so. Now I did change my variable, so let's change our limits as well. When x is equal to 0, u is that 0 plus 1, or 1. Simple. When x is equal to 2, I want to just add 1 to it, u is equal to 3. So my lower limit is now 1, and my higher limit is now 3. Now I feel comfortable integrating this, because I can take this binomial that's now sitting on top of a monomial, I can take that fraction and kind of split it apart. I was not, I could not do that before. I didn't know how to integrate this form. 
But now I can rewrite this. So the u over u becomes 1, and from that I'm subtracting 1 over u, common denominator. Now, I'm going to rewrite my power as a negative. I like to show that step. So I'm integrating from 1 to 3 of 1 minus u to a negative first power, all with respect to u. Integration, I can do these independently. So the integral of 1 du spits out u. And then the integral of negative u to the negative 1, well, that's going to raise, oh no, it's not. That is natural log. Remember that the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. Sorry. So if you have 1 over u and you're trying to find the antiderivative, well, that came from the natural log. So I've u minus the natural log of u, absolute value bars, and I need still need to um, evaluate that from 1 to 3 and then find that difference. So here we go. I think I'll write it something like this this time. I'm going to plug in my 3. From that, I need to subtract the same thing, but evaluating it at 1. Um, well, the natural log of 1, I know that. That is 0, so I don't have to worry about that. Let me go ahead and uh, subtract 1. Oh, well, 3 minus 1 is simply 2. Two minus natural log of 3. All right, so this example, uh, the new thing, let me go back. I couldn't integrate it in this form. And I have a just a different manipulation. I let u be x plus 1, so then I could rewrite x in terms of u very nicely. Then I split that fraction, like I kind of decomposed it. And then I was able to integrate uh, two separate fractions. In the end, I got 2 minus the natural log of 3. Okay, that was a lot of examples. Uh, sorry about the long video, but I think now you've seen a lot of use substitution. So go try some more examples, and I'll see you in the next video.